Okay. I would, I would like to call the meeting of the Board of Directors of the Des Moines Public Schools to order for October 2nd, 2018. Please take the roll. Natasha Newcomb. Here. Ms. Della Gardell Shelley. Here. Ms. Lankford. Here. Ms. Ellsburn. Here. Ms. Anderson. Here. Mr. Barron. Here. The first item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Are there any special requests? Then may I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda? I'll motion. I'll second. A motion by Natasha Newcomb and a second by Deanna Langford. Um, please vote. Motion passes 6-0. Next item of business is approval of the minutes. May I have a motion and a second to approve the sub September 18, 2018 minutes? So moved. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion or corrections? Please vote. Motion passes 6 0. Uh, next are district recognitions, and I'll turn it over to Dr. Ahart. Good evening, board. The school year is still fairly young, but it's a pleasure to see honors already rolling in for the good work of our schools, teachers, and students. I'd like to share one of those with you this evening. Science Bound is one of many partnerships between Iowa State University and Des Moines Public Schools. It is a pre-college program to empower Iowa students of color to pursue <laughs> degrees and careers in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics. Science Bound is designed as a nine-year program with students beginning in eighth grade and continuing through their graduation from Iowa State University. Each year, the program recognizes a science-bound high school of the year. Factors that go into the honor include the retention of students in the program over the academic year, exemplary presentations by students of their work, and individual student math improvement during science-bound summer programs. This year, East High School has been honored as the school of the year. And it's my pleasure to introduce Nikki Dorr, one of the Science Bound sponsors at East, to share with us more about the good work of the school and introduce others from East who are with us this evening. Ms. Dorr? And to present the hardware. That's Thank awesome. You. <laughs> Thank you. I was told to bring the hardware, so here it is. <laughs> um, this year, East won for the past year um, for their hard work. We had four teachers running this program. Mm -hmm. Three of the four were new teachers to the program. So it was a big accomplishment for us to turn the program around and um, get the kids re-motivated and refocused and um, put a lot of expectations on them. And they met them, obviously, very well to our expectations and science bound. And um, uh, in this program, they do a lot of things like oral justifications, career projects, science fair. So they're just doing a lot of explorations of what's out there for them and then get them ready for uh, college and hopefully a career in the STEM field. And so they did a great job at East this year. Thank you. Um, do you want to? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Before continuing with our regular meeting, I want to remind the audience that we allow any person the opportunity to speak to the board for five minutes following the presentation of an agenda item. If anyone wishes to speak to an agenda item, please go to the information table to sign up. Remarks must be germane to the agenda, and we ask that you avoid reference to personalities and character attacks as those types of comments serve no productive purpose. As a reminder to the board and public, the board will not engage in discussion or deliberation with a speaker regarding comments made to agenda items. Discussion and deliberation will remain among the board members at the board table with speakers' comments informing said discussion, deliberation, and determination as deemed necessary. We appreciate your input. Mr. Barron, would you please make the motion for consent? Sure. I move that the board approve the consent items in accordance with the recommended action for each item on the consent agenda, including bills previously authorized, certified, and approved for payment by the board secretary in the amount of $6,193,245.62. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. All right. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 6-0. <laughs> OK. Good work reading the agenda, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried. 
Our next item on the agenda is E1, open enrollment, late applications for denial. Superintendent Ahart, would you please introduce the item? Yes, per state code, uh, there is a deadline for open enrollment out applications um, where students um, can apply to attend a school outside of their resident district. Um, some special cases do allow for a late application and uh, what you have in front of you this evening are those that did not meet that standard and so are being recommended for denial. Thank you. Do we have any speakers? Okay. May I have a motion and a second to uh, deny the open enrollment late ap applications for denial? So moved. Okay. Are there any questions or discussion? Please vote. Motion passes 6-0. The next item on the agenda is item E2, Management Limitation 2.3, Treatment of Employees. Uh, Superintendent Ahart, would you please introduce the item? Yes, Management uh, Limitation 2.3, Treatment of Employees, um, has been, uh, some revisions are, have been proposed by the board, and so this is the uh, public reading and, and action. action for um, approving a basically a revised version of treatment of employees, ML 2.3. Okay. Um, may I have a motion and a second to approve the revised management limitation 2.3 treatment of employees? A motion. Second. Thank you. We do have speakers to the item. First, I will call up Pat Sweeney, and please state your name and address for the record. Pat Sweeney, 2831 Willamore Drive here in Des Moines, Iowa. Good evening, board. Dr. Ahart. Um, I, I came tonight to, uh, it's my first time back in two and a half years, <laughs> and I came tonight in support of uh, the treatment of, of employees 2.3. Um, as looking through the policy that it states, I think that, you know, history has shown that these things have worked in the past, and, you know, there's not a reason to change. And I commend you for adding these to the policy or to, I think it's going in the policy, correct? Um, so I commend you for uh, coming up with this and adding that to the, to the policy. Um, I think it gives a lot of confidence to the 5,000 plus staff that you have here. And um, bravo, you know. So, uh, you know, I, I, I looked at this and at the end I thought of something and I thought of Mr. Barron. I used to sit next to him, and one of the things I used to like to talk about is uh, John Joe Biden's quote is, uh, don't tell me what you value, show me your budget, and I will tell you what you value. And I think in this instance, you know, it's one of those things you can talk to talk. You guys are walking the walk. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next speaker is Patty Gronwald. Hello, my name is Patty Gromwald. I live at 3539 Dean Avenue in Des Moines. I have been a teacher at Hyatt Middle School for 30 years, and both my children attended Des Moines schools and then graduated from East High School. I am speaking tonight because I want to encourage you to vote in favor of ML 2.3 treatment of employees. I do, what I, I do want to thank you for the contract extension from two years ago. Uh, this extension gave me the time to prepare for this unknown future that we're now approaching. I, um, I voted for this extension despite the pay freeze that I took uh, because it gave me the insurance of insurance for my children that are still needing to be covered by my insurance. Um, and the reason I want you to continue with this is because each year I feel like more demands are being placed on the staff. Um, last year, I tried to attend many board meetings. I've been here a lot, and I do this despite the need to be preparing lessons and doing all of that. I want to stay in contact with what's going on. Um, there are many other teachers that would like to be doing that, but feel the need to, to plan and be there. And one colleague who spent nearly 100 hours outside of contract time preparing for their students in one month. Um, I'm not here to complain about the job or the district. I am here for the exact opposite. I am here because I have the best job. I get the chance to change 
lives of kids every day. I get to see the look on students' faces when they finally figure out how to do the math problem. And I have the privilege of seeing this look on many faces through the years and that others have said would never be able to figure that out. We are, um, we are here because we believe students deserve the best education, and one way to ensure this is to attract and retain the best educators. By taking up this policy, Des Moines schools can send the message to the community that it values students by valuing the educators. Good educators want to be respected and listened to. This policy sets the stage for a strong relationship among all of, among all of us in Des Moines schools and will show a future prospects that want to join Des Moines schools that they will be valued by members of the Des Moines team. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Uh, next speaker, Valerie Cohen. Good evening. Um, not really always thrilled with public speaking, but I'm back again. And if my mouth gets dry, you'll just have to excuse me. In less than two weeks' time, during February 2017, an unbroken thing was broken. The legislature of our state gutted a 40 plus year old piece of Iowa code that had been conceived after a year and a half of bipartisan effort, the likes of which I fear we will never see again. Today, as you address this resolution, I hope that you please ask yourselves if it does indeed represent your most comprehensive statement upon these issues. Because all we, the unionized labor of this district, want is a just and fair opportunity to bargain, as bargaining should be. To bargain is to give and to take. It is a glorious thing. Franklin Delano Roosevelt says, it is the real advantage of every producer, every manufacturer, and every merchant to cooperate in the improvement of working conditions because the best customer of American industry is the well-paid worker. And that boils back to what we do as a district too because we are preparing children for a future and AFSCME's children are largely within this district. The rising tide of unions raise hope raise wages and raise life quality for people all over, for the students we represent as well. The important role of union organizations must be admitted. Their object is the representation of the union categories of workers, their lawful collaboration in the economic advance of society and the development of the sense of their responsibility for the realization of the common good. According to Pope Paul, the sixth. There's no shortage of wonderful recognition out there for what unions bring to the table. And then our state did what it did. No one should have to bear the stresses of recertifications or worries of the gutted bargaining that is no real bargain. People like myself, employees of this district, are human beings and our focus should be allowed to be 110% on the students that we serve. To that end, you all have my gratitude for taking on the <laughs> ugly realities of a gutted chapter 20. Whether it is the employees that transport the children, feed the children, teach the children, or maintain their environment, we do so with pride and we appreciate your appreciating us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, board. Uh, any questions, comments, discussion? I was on. I didn't prepare anything, um, but I just want to take an opportunity to thank my colleagues for a very long journey. <laughs> I know we've had more meetings with this particular policy than any other policy in the past three years, that I, or possibly ever. Um, I 
didn't get all that I wanted, but I love that we were able to compromise and the spirit of what this policy is, means for our students, our staff, our families in the district uh, is tremendous. And I really hope that it will set an example for all the other districts to take that extra step and uh, acknowledge their employees and the bargaining units and what they do and hopefully send a message to the state that even if the state thinks that this is what is best, we know locally that we're gonna take care of each other. That's all, I'm just so grateful for this opportunity since uh, I've been working on this since February. <laughs> and most of us have been in this for quite some time too. So thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Barron. I just, I, I think it, it's appropriate to, to speak after Natasha because I, um, I want to acknowledge all of you, and I, I, you know, this is not the appropriate time to pat ourselves on the back, but this was a long conversation. It's already acknowledged. Um, people brought a lot of different perspectives to it, um, but th those of you all that, that, that really pushed, I think, did a very good job of, I think, working on it, massaging it, keeping it going, um, and you know, I'm supportive of this, but I'm supportive of it as much because of the content of the change in policy as much as I am because of what it, what I think it says about this body and what we're capable of, that you know, we're all capable of, A, working together even when we have a vast array of opinions um, and supporting something that's not 100% of what anybody necessarily would have done if they were emperor. Um, and I think that's laudable in this era and makes me really appreciative of being on this board with, with all of you. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful and optimistic about um, what this says to our staff and uh, of all shapes and sizes and jobs and responsibilities and I hope that, that folks understand that um, this district from the top to the bottom values the people that come to work every single day and, uh, and, and wants to treat them in the best possible way. Uh, and, uh, and my hope is that that is a signal to other folks that Des Moines is the place to come if you want to improve kids' lives and be valued while you're doing it. Um, I agree with Rob, now's not the time to necessarily pat ourselves on the back for the hard work we've done, but I do want to thank Natasha for her leadership and all of that I have learned in working on this policy with her and with Heather and with the rest of the, the board members. This is kind of my first, this was kind of my first experience of like something was presented and we worked it and worked it and worked it and worked it and now, you know, we're here and that's exciting, but um, I think this is a, you know, like someone said, it's a huge testament to the quality of staff that we have in our district, of the quality of faculty, of the quality of employees, and just the quality of work that we know that they do every single day. And we all know that if the budget was the sky's the limit, that we'd be able to do so much more. And yet somehow, our staff always managed to do more in where we are right now. And we all know what that looks like from a funding standpoint. So I just wanna say that thank you we value you and hopefully this helps put your mind at ease so that, like has been said, you can give 110% focus to our kids and we're not gonna have to be distracted this year with extraneous items and we can focus on the most important business now that we've gotten this out of the way. Um, I kinda wanna echo what um, Kirsten and Natasha just said. Um, I am happy that we can support the staff of DMPS in this way and um, just happy for Natasha being having perseverance and all of us coming together and making this happen. So it's an exciting night. I have nothing else to add either. Thanks everyone for your comments. Um, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. I think we're ready to vote. Please do. Motion passes 6-0.
Thank you. Um, next item is information only items. The board, um, it, there's a preliminary plans of Lovejoy Elementary School improvement project. Um, the board can peruse that. Um, and then items of privilege. Um, first, I'll ask if any board members have comments or announcements for items of privilege. Okay. I just want to mention that Terry Caldwell Johnson um, was not able to be here tonight. She is actually traveling in South Af Africa. Um, she was, I should have mentioned during that vote, I guess, that um, had she been here, she also would have been in support of, of that item that we just passed. Um, and otherwise, I have nothing else to report, so we'll turn it over to Dr. Ahart for the superintendent's report. Uh, just one quick note. I, I want to recognize the, the staff at both North High School and Hoover High School after an unfortunate incident at the Hoover uh, homecoming game a couple of weeks ago with uh, only a little over two minutes left on the clock. The game was, uh, was, was ended prematurely. Uh, because of some uh, extracurricular activity um, outside the stadium. And uh, the teams got together last night. That was no small feat. They actually had to get the same officiating crew back together <laughs> um, to finish um, less than three minutes of football. But um, Hoover was victorious. Um, but the teams got together prior to the game to take a unity picture. And um, they're looking for other ways to, to make what was, uh, you know, a very unfortunate incident into a positive. And that's something that our staff does exceedingly well day in and day out. So kudos to the North and Hoover teams. Okay. Uh, with no other business, I will now adjourn the regular meeting of the board for September 18th, 2018. And board, if you could be back in about, if we can take a 10 minute break and be back for the work session, that'd be great.